Listen to the radio. Harry and Edna's want to show you heard it from the three bells. What oh, Harry? And what oh, Edna? And welcome. Ooh, Ooh, what was that? That sounded like the <laughs> funeral march. <laughs> I think it was a passing boat. Oh, was it? Just sounding its horn. It was uh, just a passing boat. Okay. That's all it was. Oh, excellent. I'm glad it's a boat, not a boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just a passing boat as we bob along at the Solent. It, indeed. And we, as we broadcast from the Solent facing dear old England. What ho! Welcome to Harry and Edna on the wireless. And in this programme, Harry, what are we going to be talking about? Well, I'm a bit more worried about that boat that just gone by, that big liner. I know. This, it sounded amazing, didn't it? It did, it did. But I'm, I'm thinking, right, should, should it be right light on the left and green right on the right? What? Or, what? Well, what? you've got to have, different, what? Ca- you've have <laughs> different lights on the side of your boat. Do you? So, that have pe- so other boats know which is your left and which is your right. Uh, do you? I never yeah, realised that. Yeah, but I don't know which that. way it is. There's, there's okay. always one green and one red, but I don't know which way around so it goes. you'd have to figure that out before you went out on a boat, otherwise you could be completely fooling someone. You mean like we are? Yes. <laughs> we sound knowledgeable, but really we haven't got a clue. But I learned a lot about liners when I recently went to the Victoria and Albert Museum and saw an exhibition all about luxury liners, the heyday of the luxury liner. This is right, because when the time we're recording this, it is 2018, mm-hmm. and the Victoria and Albert are doing one all about the golden age of liners. No, and... You actually got to see part of the Titanic. I, do you know, it was amazing because these were, there was two bits actually that were fished out of the sea. Um, ocean. Ocean. Big, big blue thing. Big blue wobbly thing. Uh, when, after the Titanic had sank and these two bits were on display. I mean, obviously there was lots of it, but these two particular bits were on display. One was one of the wooden panels from the first class dining saloon. And the second bit was one of the sort of... They're not deck chairs, Harry. What do you call them? They're sort of sun loungers, but wooden. Wooden sun loungers. Wooden sun lounging thing. Did you nip behind the glass and just pose and did a <gasps> selfie? Did you do you know, one? I would have loved to have reached over and just touched it. Just so you can say you touched a bit of something that was on the Titanic itself. It was an incredible experience and it was an amazing exhibition. They really do know how to put on... You know, how to display things so they look amazing. Shall we let them into a secret? Go you're going to give me daggers at this, because yeah. this is a private um, thing. In your career, yeah. you used to work for the Imperial War Museum. Yeah. At the Cabinet War Rooms. Yeah. That's underground Churchill's World War Two bunker. I know where you're going with bunker. this one. Go on. Am I allowed to say it? Go on. And that's all behind glass. Yes. Because it's all pristine, as it was left in 1945, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Ish. But you went behind the glass. Well, I had to collect the golden eggs from this Easter competition trail thing that they'd put on for the children. And yes, I got to go behind the glass and I got to touch the desk where the phones were. Did the phone work? <gasps> I you, touched it. <laughs> did you lift it up and go, hello, hello Whitehall, one, two, one, two? <laughs> no, I didn't. I just, I did go and touch it there. Did you jump Which up? is very sad. It's a bit nerdy of me, but it was lovely to say I've touched that phone. <laughs> what, the phone that, <laughs> that Mr. Winston Churchill, Churchill might have looked at? <laughs> Did you jump on his bed? No, I didn't. No, I was uh, I was allowed to go You're behind the glass that, of that, that bit. No, 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 no. But uh, it was lovely <laughs> to be able to actually go behind the glass. I was right. quite privileged. Right, we are we are nattering, and we should be we playing are. some tunes I know. because we have a guest lined up. We do, we as well. Her name is Millie Kay. Yay, Millie! What a Millie! Um, but before then, who are we going to play? Let's play a bit of Billy Turnant with "You've Started Something." What ho? Well, that was lovely, wasn't it? I thought we were going to go into another track where there was no singing, but luckily he came in and rescued the day. He did. He did. It's good to hear from him every now and again, isn't it? Who is the chap? Oh, it's Billy. Billy. Dr. Billy. Billy Turnant. Yeah. How do you know he's Dr. Billy? No, I don't know, but in a previous show we had a, a, our friend Billy oh, from the Broadway yes, Twisters. yes. Who has since Been left. Become well, he, a doctor. But I think he still does. Twisting. Broadway twisting, but he's also mm. a doctor. If you go through the back catalogue, you'll find it's Broadway twisters, and he's the bass player. Yes. And uh, in fact, he plays every instrument under the sun. I know. He's one of those talented people that you get envious of because he, whenever he picks up instrumental wise, he, he just does it brilliantly. And then we learned he was Dr. Billy. Yes. He got his doctorate. He'd be like um, Professor Brian Cox next, won't he? Because he yeah. used to be in a. 
pop band. That, that's true. He's following the same. He sort was in Dream, wasn't he? And things can only get better, and all those sort of things. And yeah, now he's. Uh, I know. He's up there with Patrick Moore and um, Stephen Hawking for his bringing science to popularity. Well, he's doing arena shows now, isn't he? Yes, yeah, that's he's true. He's going to do uh, the O2, which is a. If you're listening from abroad and you don't know what the O2 is, that's like a mega stadium. Mm. That is. I think it's the biggest To do a science in show in a mega stadium like that really shows you the draw that he has. He has. Anyway, we're going but, off at a tangent but no, again. I'm not because I think it's exactly on foot. Because talking of a draw. Yeah. Who would draw people in to listen to the radio? Not only the, the very person who did Bedford Got Talent. And, and did she win Bedford Got Talent? Um, mm, no, 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 no. Runner up. Runner up. Runner up. Runner up. <laughs> <laughs> I think she came second. Oh, well, there you are. That's, that's <clears throat> okay. But we have Millie Kay joining us on the show. Now, I say that because we've got to say a big thank you to our friends at Seclo 105 FM, who lent us a studio near um, near Bedford Way, in, they're in, based in Milton Keynes. They lent us a studio so we could record this interview with Millie. So she came over to Milk and Beans, and we, 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 we sailed up the Solent and then up the Grand Union Canal. Do they link? Somehow, there must be Eventually, a interlinking rivers. We, 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 went, we wendled our way, didn't we, up through the little rivers and streams and got there eventually. It's, it, it was a trek. Yeah. You try getting a, a, a Solent ferry through, um, through the Grand Union Canal locks. Yeah, it, it was tricky. It a, was challenging. A, a roll on, roll off ferry. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that one there. Let's okay, go okay. and talk to Millie. We're going to talk to Millie. Millie's coming next just after this trap by Benny Goodman. And I've got my love to keep me warm. What ho? But um, we have our guest to the show, the Sting. Is that and the that was, yeah, <laughs> that's the start of the interview. <laughs> so, welcome, Camilla, to the show. Or should I call you Millie? Millie Kay. Well, yeah, I am. That's my alter ego these days. So, yeah, my name's Camilla. My name is Millie Kay. Oh, brilliant. So, I know you from the Stables Theatre, where you volunteer. But I also understand that you have a love of singing. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about, about what got you into to singing? Singing. Yes, I do, really. I mean, I guess I've sung since I was about three years old. I used to listen to records that my mum used to play, really, on the, on her gramophone years ago. And she used to play all the 40s, 50s, 60s kind of songs. Yeah. And I would sing along with it, really. Oh, well. <laughs> so that, did that sort of, in, is that something that was then ingrained into you and you've just always loved to sing to everything or to sort of uh, what, what kind of then encouraged you to um, take it that step further yeah I think I never did anything at school funnily enough I used to sing at home but then it was when I went to university I went in in, um, ooh, in the 80s to York University and they had societies there and I became a part of uh, some of the Amdram societies ah there? so that's that's if we kind of put singing on hold for a minute and, and take you back even further so that was the emergence of the amateur dramatics in your life yeah it was really so i joined york light opera society oh wow so <laughs> some, um, going in at the deep end yeah and, and uh, did some variety shows and um i remember being in sweet charity oh, wow. and annie and yeah. <laughs> various musicals so what how did you how do you then go from being uh, somebody singing at home in your bedroom to joining a light operatic D- did you know you could always sing or was it sort of something you thought oh well what the heck I'll give it a try yeah I guess so I mean if people say oh that sounds nice it gives you a bit of encouragement doesn't it yeah. but uh, I just thought I'd give it a try and if you start in the chorus and you're not at the front of the show yeah. then you learn whether or not you're any good or not just singing in the background in the chorus yeah. to start with and whether they leave you in the back or whether they coax you to come yeah. forward is that, is that a good sign <laughs> It is, I think, yeah. <laughs> so you get so, slowly yeah. further down the benches towards the front. Yeah, so you get a bit more experience. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, you did. Brilliant. So did you, have you had training with your singing or is it... I've, no, I've not. I've never been trained, but... Um, I, uh, the other thing I've done is join choirs, and so I used to be in choral societies, um, again in York and in Bedford as well, and there you get a lot of training in technique. Okay. And I think, so it's a very formal way to sing in choral societies, but the technique you learn there you can then use in other styles of music. Right, so is that the techniques of how to hold a note for longer and not run out of puff yeah and sing from your stomach instead of your throat and so yeah and um diction and um the way that you um 
you, you speak the, the lyrics sometimes, so you'd learn a lot of vocal techniques. Ah, so is it, I guess some of it as well with um, singing, sort of talking to other singers, it's for them is, um, and I think I actually got it from, we had at the stables recently uh, a, a session with Evelyn Glenny, and she was ta- trying to teach children how to feel the music. Mm. So rather than just play a piece and be very cut and dry, to actually absorb the music and feel it and, and feel the emotion of it. So is that is can, does, yeah. do you, can you transfer that to singing? Is that yeah. rather than just singing something straight off a sheet? Do you? You can, and I, I think that takes some time though. When you first start in your teenage years, you don't really get that. And I think as you get older, I think you learn more and more how to feel a song rather than just sing it straight from a piece of paper yeah what how so did you enjoy the amateur dramatics do you still do it i I haven't done it a long time um now because i had a little girl and so it's difficult to commit to doing a regular thing yeah because when you do amdram you're doing it mondays and wednesdays usually or two or three nights a week it's a lot of a commitment yeah and so i stopped doing that uh five or six years ago and that was one reason actually why i thought well i'll i'll sing in a different way Mm -hmm. uh, and branched out on my own a bit just to sing when i could fit it in and, and when it suited me yeah so do you have any sort of particular favorite shows um, I guess that, that you were sort of did you amateur dramatics? Yeah, um, I like Carousel. That was yeah. a good one to sing. Uh, the Rogers and Hammerstein mm. shows. I like some of the modern shows. I like Jesus Christ Superstar and the oh, Lloyd yes. Webber musicals yeah. as well. Yeah, as, as the older ones. So I really like all musicals of every yeah. era. Yeah. Really. Is that because um, you can sort of get behind them and really belt out the song? Or yeah. Is it? yeah. <laughs> I guess so, I guess so. Um, and uh, I like a, a musical called A Star is Born. I don't know if you know that with Judy no, Garland. It's no. a musical film, and that's one of my favourites. Oh, OK. <laughs> what ho? There you go. It's a little bit quick, that, wasn't it? Yes. We just had a few bit... snippets of each song there. Yes, but there is a word for that, Harry, isn't there? Well, yeah, because the, the tracks that Millie gave us actually was from her showreel. And... Uh, which you can watch on YouTube, actually. And, uh, well, that's why it sort of, like, cuts and goes. It's a visual thing. You've really got to see it first, really, to get the full appreciation of it, But it really. gives you a flavour of, of her diversity in well, her singing. She really did, and it's a shame mm. that the interviews were um, somewhat short. But we have got more of Millie. We did manage to, but uh, time was pressing for both of us. It's a fair way from the Solent. When you've got a boat, you've got to, you know, you've got to get the tides right. And we had to get all the way back again, didn't we? We had to get back. Um, and it's lovely that she was actually came all over to see us. And she'll talk a little bit about Bedford's Got Talent. She didn't talk about it that time. No, 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 no that's because that was come. the big thing, wasn't it? That was the big thing. Bedford's Got Talent. Mm. Did you know that? There's well, that's talent important. in Bedford. It doesn't matter where else there's talent. It, it ha- it's sort of so important that it comes from Bedford. And we should also mention mm. that Millie, many years ago, well, she did, it must be going back about three or four years, performed at Hedner's. We used to run a vintage nightclub called Hedner's. We did. Aww. We do miss Hedner's. We do miss Hedner's. We should Hedner's. talk about Hedner's a bit later on, because people still miss it. You know, we have a Facebook page for Hedner's, and we haven't done one now for a good couple of years. No, and a I year, still get nearly messages. a year. It was is June. It, was yeah, it? I'm sure it was last June, was which is it? nearly a year ago. Either way, I still yeah. get people messaging us saying, when, when we're doing another one, I'm going... Yeah, we miss it. One day. One day, chums, well, we will. There is a slight problem. We yes. used to have a, a vehicle that was quite large, mm-hmm. and we could get the whole stage set in the back. It was designed, the stage set, to fit in the back of this vehicle. Yeah. And that vehicle died. Well, and we ended it, up with another it, one. it was creaking and groaning, wasn't it, and yeah. showing how much we'd abused it really <laughs> and there's no way it, that set's going to fit in the new in, no. in the new one but so i've got we'll no way of moving else. it over there harry we're creative we will think of something else but do don't worry like guys it? and chums we will we will we will do it again we all miss it dreadfully we do miss it but really do you think there'll be yes, another head yes of course right. and another guys maybe right see never say never harry glass half full yeah. That's that's what the approach you need is. And if you want to know what Hedner's was like, we actually recorded some shows from Hedner's. So if you go to harryandedna.co.uk, not only can you hear this show, but you can hear the back catalogue, including ones we recorded live from Hedner's. Nice, Harry. Remember that? Nice. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah it was low. Like, you see how I, so like I just that. slipped that, that in clever. there? Um, but we did. Mm. And we actually have in the can, and one day we might put it out, the very final show. 
Oh, we've not broadcast it. Have but we we've not? Got, we've got about three hours because the head has lasted about three, three and a bit hours. Yeah, we've got all three hours. Wow, and you can the share in bits. the joy. Yes. <laughs> well, that was never a boring bit. What do you mean the boring bits? <laughs> the the, the uh, sound check. <laughs> yeah. You no, doing it was the hoovering in, 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 in your in evening glam, gown before before we let in the punters glam. in. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the bit. You just saw the demure Edna looking glamorous, but you hadn't seen me with Henry the Hoover minutes before. No, because we should explain Hedna's was held. It had been a, a, a restaurant about an hour before we turned it in. Yeah. So we'd set a lot of the, 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 all the stage set and everything would be up. Then everyone would dine around, dine around the stage it, set. And then they would go, leave a real mess. We had to take all the tables and chairs out and putting new ta- different tables and chairs for the nightclub. And make it look like it had never been a restaurant. And we had an hour. Yeah. So which meant we didn't have time to get changed before. Did we have an hour? I thought we had about um, well, maybe a bit 45 less. minutes. But either way, mm. we didn't have long. So we had to be dressed, ready to let the punters in straight away. Yeah, it was 45 minutes till the yeah. doors opened. So we, we were. You were literally hoovering yeah. in your evening gown. Yeah. And I'm like crawling around in a lighting rig in my um, evening dress. Yes. <laughs> But we had a great headness crew, didn't we, who could we did. really help us. We do miss you all. It yeah. all worked like clockwork in the end. It did. We got it down to about, we could set it up in about 20 minutes. Yeah, because everyone just was on we it. Just knew what to do. Literally, yeah. as soon as the last diners left, the fire escapes would open because we'd drag all the chairs and out of the restaurant tables and chairs and they were straight out the fire escape. Yeah. And they were like stacked up in the car park. Yeah. People must have thought, what on earth was happening? <laughs> <laughs> and all the other stuff we had was already on sack bowers waiting to become back in the other side of the fire escapes ready to to put it out but I, that, see to me that is the magic of theatre you, you you have this kind of front don't you this image this thing you present and what people see is is the frontage they don't see all the things that had gone on behind the scenes getting it ready and and then literally the music would play the doors would open and it'd be a completely different atmosphere to the frantic manic changeover that was going on minutes before talking the frantic changeover and we will play some some music because we were a a little bit overrunning oh dear i do remember many a time Mm. because um i was wearing an original cc41 dinner jacket dinner suit and it and i lost weight Oh, Do you yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. And I was held, my suit was held together with gaffer tape and safety pins. Yes, because your trousers <laughs> fell down whilst getting headless ready. <laughs> well, and and we were that, busy think, trying to yeah. gaffer tape you into your trousers. <laughs> and then you put your coat on and it looked like nothing had happened. That's what I say, the magic of theatre. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I always dress like this. Just, yes, to, just, just don't, don't bend ask me over. to bend over. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, we've got some more Millie, yeah, and we've got another, a little bit more from her show, Will. But first, let's have a little bit of um, Woody Herman, and he's singing about... Laura. What ho! And we'd like to welcome back to the studio, Millie Kay. So welcome back. You Thank didn't you. dash out the door in fear. No, that's fine. <laughs> and as Harry referred to, you sort of revived, revived, is that the right word? Your singing career after you'd had um, your daughter. Mm. And was that, was it Bedford's Got Talent that, that sort of used you into rejuvenating the singing career? Or was that sort of at the peak of, of what you're doing that you decided um, to go on that? I'd done a little bit of singing before Bedford's Got Talent uh, came came on uh, the scene and then uh, somebody encouraged me to apply for it and so I did and uh, there were auditions in Bed yeah. um, there were auditions in Bedford and uh, I went along and then went through the rounds and got into the final 10 <laughs> so wow. uh, that was really good yeah. and I enjoyed it and so that was at the Corn Exchange oh right so you yeah. were there in front of the panel of judges yeah there were three of them yes were they all really sort of <laughs> fierce and scary or were they quite nice <laughs> to be honest they were quite kind I think. Yeah, were they <laughs> Compared to Simon Cowell and the others, really? they were quite kind. So you didn't have a big X that shone? No, <laughs> no, they just had cards to wave. Oh, right, really? <laughs> the audience voted in the end, uh, oh, so that was a really good okay. thing. Yeah. yeah, rather than just three people's yeah. personal opinion. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So was that intimidating or was that... Yeah, did was, you enjoy it? It was nerve-wracking. I enjoyed yeah. it, but it was nerve-wracking. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, something different anyway. Yeah, yeah. oh, brilliant. So I, yeah, I sang Cabaret. That's the song I did on the, oh. the final day. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So um, d- did you then sort of go on from there and say, well, yeah, I quite like this singing, so I would like to actually do more of it? Yeah, definitely. And I get a buzz out of it. I, I, I really enjoy music. It's, it's a big part of my life. And, uh, you know, 
yeah, it, it gives me a lot of pleasure. So yeah. I, I sing in cafes and bars, and I do uh, charity concerts if I'm asked to. Oh, so, brilliant! Uh, yeah, so, I used to do at uh, Unilever Colworth yeah. up in Sharnbrook. Uh, ah. They used to have a, a variety show every year for charity, usually for the air ambulance or children's charities. So I used to do that. Wow! So you'd get do you, do you kind of get all glammed up when you sing? Because I know we've sort of interviewed other performers, and they've said. Um, it was certainly uh, the the last uh, Nicole that does burlesque, um, and she was then turned into a, a, a singing performer. And she said, in some ways, you put on your glamour, and you you have mm. that cr- a sort of um, confidence. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> this mouth the word at me <laughs> to to then go out mm. on stage because yeah. you, you kind of not hide behind what you wear but it kind of enth- it sort of enthuses you yeah no i definitely identify with that and it's it's very different going from amdram to then singing on your own because when you're in amdram you're in a part and you're playing a character but then when you're singing on your own you still do this you put on your slap as i call yeah. it yeah. and i have a few wigs <laughs> but I've, i'm open to have my hair done i believe yes. I have. So that'll be yep. the first time i've uh, had my hair done in that kind of style it'd be great and yeah. so yeah you do kind of put on a bit of a, a character performance yeah. really ah so do you go for the big sort of sequin dress numbers or mm, maybe I have yeah. one or two sequins I'll have to choose what dress ah, I'm going to wear reveal on the night I, <laughs> not literally obviously I reveal yeah. the outfit yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh we'll brilliant so do you have a particular style that you enjoy singing or a sort of era of songs mm, yeah I mean I really like jazz and blues uh, and uh, Judy Garland Ella mm. Gerald numbers the, the standards yeah you know, that kind of era and do you prefer the songs that you can really belt out or do you go for sort of quiet ballady types both actually both it depends on the audience and the the venue but um there's some songs that are really quite moody and quiet but i think um some more upbeat numbers will will do the trick in june and i think yeah even the the power numbers uh, yeah yeah enjoyable so a bit of both yeah yeah brilliant what ho right that was our millie Hi. Millie Kay, uh, showing the vocal range she has. And she did a cracking performance at Hedner's. Yes, she did. And she really does have a, a great vocal range. It's just sad about those tracks we had to play of Millie's, because they came from a showreel. So if you go to YouTube, I'm sure you'll, you can find her, which is great, but it didn't make great radio. Great no. TV, not so great with the radio, unfortunately. Which is a shame, because it doesn't really, as you say, it doesn't really portray how good her voice was and, and the range that she had. And she did belt out some very uh, that's not very technical is it belting out but she did manage to sing some really great show tunes which are of their day of the the sort of Mm. 40s and 50s yeah and she can hold a note she can a nice long note just like we saw you saw morton harkett is it yes some pop combo chappy yeah who apparently according to wikipedia has the record for holding the longest note on a pop song really uh, I, I wouldn't know what pop song that was. Well, you went to see him in concert. I know, but he sung so many different ones. <laughs> but he can... Um, I can only think of two songs I ever did. Uh, it's great that, that as he's aged, he still managed to retain his voice because sometimes singers, as they age, obviously your voice ages and you you haven't got the capacity or the vocal range that you once had. But he still has, bless him, he still sounds great. Yeah, um, we should. It sounds like the waves are bashing against the side of the boat. If you heard a bit of thumping and lumping, it's, yes, it's, yeah. the, it's not thundering, is it? No, we, no. we've had that already today. <laughs> no, it's it's the children invading the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's one of those the hazards of being on the solo. <laughs> it is. So, but let's go back. Go on then. to Millie. Mm. She performed at Hedner's as many a good artist has done. Yeah. But it's not. But what was Hedner's? Hedner's was our vintage nightclub. But it wasn't just a performing singers, was it? It was, you know, and it wasn't just a. But it was dancing. But what else went on? Well, we did a nightclub as you would have been entertained really in the heyday of of nightclubs in our mind in the nineteen thirties. And you went and you were you sat and you were entertained. And we had a compare, didn't we? We would have um, singers or or bands or artists and then we would do a little section in the middle because sometimes people did get up and dance. But for those of us that are not as good dancers as some of the the absolute Fred Astaire's and Ginger Rogers that we did have on the dance floors, we used to do this little section in the middle, which was what we called our party dances. That's where 
everyone could get up and join in. So you didn't have to be amazing on the dance floor. And they were such fun, especially at that point in the evening, everyone had had a, a tipple or two. So, you know, anything goes. So we're doing the, the Paul says. Jones yep. and the Okie Cokie. Yeah. And... Bumps a daisy. Oh, your hand, knees and bumps a daisy. Now, these, yeah. now you may think of these as, as children get party songs but actually these were very popular party dances of the 1930s yeah and many a time me and tom ranted over and over again hands knees and whoops a daisy tom you mean mr thomas b benjamin wilder squire i'm just trying to think who was our compare and viv the spiv was also one of our compares yeah and once we compared it but less said about that the better yeah well anyway (laughs) moving on so there was hands knees so you'd, you'd clap your hands touch your knees Put, sort of bump your hips together with your partner and then you change would, partners no you would turn turn so you do like a little waltz mm. and then you'd move on partner so the gentleman would move on to the next lady and then it would start again yeah but then there was one dance everybody could do wasn't there there was and that was this one that we're going to sing now it, it, it was the conga but this wasn't just any old conga was it we had a nice classic tune to do our conga to what ho Edna hmm have you come Did back? you just say Hedna? I said Edna. I thought you said Hedna. No, no, I said, have you come back in the room? I have. You can't listen to that song without jiggling and wiggling and, and feeling the vibe, can you? That was it. Because you used to often lead the conga. Yes. And you didn't just stay in the nightclub, did you? No, because we uh, where we were, there was a foyer and there was also a much larger auditorium the other side. And it was quite fun to suddenly break open the doors... And lead a conga through a foyer full of people, sometimes dressed in kind of... I'm just thinking one night there was... It was quite a heavy metal gig night, wasn't it? And there was several other hairy bikers in the foyer. And we break out in all our finest dandy outfits with our top hats and tails and our beautiful cocktail dresses congering. Yeah. See, because you used to work there, Mm. I always thought one day you might just... There'll be, I don't know, southern death metal or whatever on stage... And you would take, because you knew the way at the back way, you'd yeah. take him round, and then in the middle of them doing their um, whatever thrash it is, metal thrash something. metal, <laughs> you guys would come on stage, conquering through the middle. La, la. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it was very tempting at times, but we, we behaved. Yeah. But you used to go around the car park. Yeah, back through the foyer again, back in through the doors. The doors would shut, and people would think, what on earth was and, that? <laughs> and then normal service resumed after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it got people talking, and it got people looking and staring, which is, uh-huh. you know, part of of what you've got to do really we do miss headners mm. we'll have to play the final headners i'll have to um i have got i have got the recording of it and uh, i'll speak to the people who are p- performing if they're happy to yeah let us broadcast i'm sure it. they will and there was much help. fun and frolics wasn't there at the nightclub but it was a sad one when it was the final one yeah because i remember benjamin b wilder squire yeah saying to me i'm out of work now oh <laughs> you've made me redundant <laughs> you've made me redundant this is the end but it was it was it was a fun time. It was it was. We've got time for a track. Who are we going to play? Why don't we play Lewis Levy and his Gaumont British Symphony? The eyes of the world are on you. What ho! I do love any act that is the Gaumont British Symphony. I'm sure that should, probably should have orchestra at the end of it, yeah. but it is missing that part in our label. But uh, so we're assuming it's an orchestra, aren't we? But you know, you have bands like we were talking about Morton Harkett, who was ha ha three letters and this is lewis levy and the gormont british symphony orchestra and they just don't have names like they used to do they <laughs> <laughs> they certainly don't they're too short now they don't. well we're gonna have to go off and dream about no. headners and i am gonna go and dream i, I do miss that gig it yeah. was a lovely gig and there's some lovely people there we used to have a nice set of regulars that came yeah who really got into spirit because that's what made headners so special it wasn't what we did it was the fact it was like a community almost and it was one big community wasn't it there yeah. was never sort of people making little sort of cliques around tables it was mm. one big room and it was lovely how people started off with just a suit or just dressed smartly and then they really got into it and invested in their full dinner jacket and suit it was brilliant yeah because um tails wasn't it remember mm. the, the, that chap with the tails and his long walking sticky yeah thing? yeah yeah people really went to town didn't yeah, they Yeah, and the gloves old gentlemen wearing gloves yeah and you had your fez and then they became a bit of a fez off didn't they oh, with yes. mr fez M- multiple fezes were worn yes but fezzes are so cool. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I do, we do have to go. So I've got to say, t- t- I'm going to oh, say toodle pip tonight. Okay, and it's a tinkety tonk from me. What ho?